Hey guys, Dr. Burke here. In this video, we're going to talk about how to reverse atherosclerosis. That's hardening of your arteries. Now, typically people have this idea that this problem comes purely from consuming too much cholesterol. Okay, so let's kind of dissect really what happens. Here's an artery. There's always a pre-existing lesion or a crack in the artery before this whole chain of event occurs. It's a microhemorrhaging. And uh, what happens is the cholesterol comes in there as a band-aid to heal the, the bleeding crack in your arteries. So that's, what, that's one big purpose of cholesterol. And it actually works with calcium to form a, like a little band-aid. And what causes the lesion or the crack is usually either a low vitamin C situation because the person is not consuming enough vegetables. Okay, that's number one. Because vitamin C, in it, and I'm not talking about the synthetic vitamin C, I'm talking about real vitamin C in its whole complex. Because vitamin C in the complex has uh, a factor, it's a type of copper in an enzyme form called tyrosinase, which basically helps you form collagen. Okay, so if you don't have that factor, you get a lot of cracks and problems in the vascular system. Okay? loss of collagen. Everything becomes very rigid. So we need the vitamin C from the vegetables, okay? The other thing that will cause it would be high insulin because the person consumes too much sugar or refined carbohydrates. That can also cause inflammation and microhemorrhaging. So we have this lesion. The body comes in, forms a little placking thing to try to protect it with cholesterol. And by the way, cholesterol will also go way up with insulin. In fact, unless you have a genetic problem with uh, cholesterol, which is very rare, I will bet anything your cholesterol is coming from too much insulin. So if you were to cut out all the carbs, like refined carbs and sugars and alcohol, that cholesterol will come down faster than anything with probably within a month. Okay, that's just a side note. So here we got this combination of cholesterol and calcium placking. And then what happens is that it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger and um, it creates a, a, like a clogging of an artery, okay? Now, other things that can cause this calcium buildup would be taking too much calcium in the wrong form, especially. Let's say you're taking calcium carbonate. That is limestone. That is cement, okay? Then you actually add it with vitamin D, calcium with vitamin D. You know what vitamin D does? It actually helps you absorb calcium in the gut by 20 times, okay? Not not by 20%, 20x. So you're absorbing all this calcium and the blood is filling up with calcium. That's gonna cause what's called hypercalcemia. So the combination of this vitamin D with calcium, which so many people are taking as a supplement, because you get tested by the doctor, he says you're low vitamin D, so you start taking it, you add some calcium in there, right? And you think you're doing yourself some good, but what happens is you're just filling up the arteries with calcium especially if you don't have the mag magnesium because magnesium helps to buffer the calcium as well. So what's missing in this whole picture? Well, in order for you to um, have vitamin D work correctly in calcium, you need another vitamin called vitamin K2. If you've never heard about this, you need to do some research. I put some links below so you can watch some more data on K2. But vitamin K2, probably in the next few years, will be very, very... Um, mainstream because what it does. It basically removes calcium from the soft tissues of the body. It helps to clean up the calcification on the arteries. It basically prevents your arteries turning into bone and stone. It makes your arteries more elastic. It's really good for blood pressure. So um, K2, well guess where you get vitamin K2? It's, in, it's a fat-soluble vitamin, so it's in all the fats that the doctor has been telling you to avoid. It's in cheese, it's in egg yolk, it's in grass-fed fatty meats. It's also in uh, a soy product called NATO, it's a Japan dish, but mainly it's in the fats. So here the person is consuming a low-fat diet, their arteries are clogged, they put them on Coumadin, and by the way, blocks vitamin K1, so now you can't eat the vegetables. Where, where are you going to get your vitamin C from? You take it from a pill. It's usually going to be synthetic. So you're going to take the synthetic vitamin C, which will actually aggravate everything. 
So it really is, is messed up. What we need to do is we need to, if you're on Kumatin, you need to take the right amount of vegetables. Okay, I have a video on that if you want to see that. Uh, that are low vitamin K. Get the vitamin C. Heal this original thing. Start taking vitamin K2. You can take D3. And you can probably even take some calcium, but probably not a good idea unless you have cramps in your calves. That's a good indication that you need calcium, but most people can get it from the food because you're eating these foods right here, like cheese. That's going to give you enough calcium. I think the only time that I recommend a calcium supplement is typically if the person has cramps in the calves or they have osteoporosis or osteopenia. Okay? I like to get that one from the food. But vitamin D is important as well, but we need the vitamin K2. Okay? So if you were to do these things, reduce the insulin, take the vegetables, add the K2, uh, avoid the calcium, you'll be in pretty good shape and you can create some nice change over time. And by the way, people that are taking antacids, well, they're getting the calcium carbonate. You'd be better off chewing on cement down the street. You know. All right, so I threw a lot at you. Um, hope this helped and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Please click the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.